Introduction to Digital Photography Rule of Thirds Learning Outcomes By the end of this section, you will have a good grounding in how to compose your photograph by following this concept known as the Rule of Thirds. Of course, like all rules, it's there to be broken, but always make sure you have a very good reason for doing so. The great thing about this rule is that it is a very simple way to improve the composition of your shot and it's generally a safe bet especially if you're unsure as to how to frame your subject or even the landscape in your scene this technique is also very common in film and i'm sure many of you have seen it used very well let us take a look at the basic composition of a quick photograph i took in late autumn at a race car event and you will immediately notice that there is a grid of nine squares evenly distributed over the photograph. There are two horizontal lines going across the image and two vertical lines running from top to bottom. The key goal here is to ensure that your point of interest occurs at these intersecting lines. At a very basic level you might say that I succeeded with what I intended to do, in that I captured the young woman standing on the back of the truck. But it's not perfect by any means, and it is a good starting example of how to get the right balance in your photography. With this technique, your main interest will often be thrown slightly left or right of the center of the image. In this case, the lady photographed is off to the left in the photograph. I could have improved the compositional balance of the photograph if I had positioned the line of the crowd to meet the lower right hand side line. And this is why I mentioned in earlier videos that it's always good to take as many photographs as you can. Then you can pick which one suits best. With portraiture photography, which we mentioned as a style earlier in the module, the line of interest is generally in line with the eyes, so that the horizontal line meets the vertical line. This portrait photograph of a friend of mine, Ryan, should give you all great hope if you are new to portraiture photography. This was the first time I worked on a staged photography, and it's also my first attempt at following this compositional guideline. You are immediately drawn to Ryan's eyes, as they are the main point of interest in this photograph. In a sense, the eyes are the story. We are curious to know what he is looking at and what he is thinking about, as he is obviously deep in thought. This technique is very useful when taking landscape photography. Again, we have action along the periphery of each line. It may not be perfect, but there is a nice balance in this photograph. The first horizontal line threads the border of the mountain tops and the skyline clouds. The lower line intersects with the right-sided vertical line, drawing your attention to the little cottage. These lines are subtly telling us where to look, and, unbeknownst to ourselves, our eyes are being directed to certain sections of the scene namely the cottage and the skyline. I do a lot of documentary work, particularly interviews, and my first short film was, in fact, a short documentary. Framing your subjects in documentaries is very important, as it sets the tone for the remainder of the piece. This also applies to portraiture photography. Depending on how you frame a person can lead the viewer or audience to think or feel a certain way towards the subject within the frame. Be it photography or video, the same rule applies. The great thing about the thirds technique refers to the potential to create lines yourself from objects or lines that occur naturally within the frame. This can come in the shape of a tree, a wall, or even a stop sign on the side of the road. The important thing is having the creative vision to see these opportunities within your frame and utilizing them as you see fit. 
As you can see from this comparison sequence of the same image, the photograph is lined using objects within the scene, particularly the second pole that runs along the right hand side vertical line. The photograph maintains balance by running the skyline of the nearby town almost on that lower line, filling up the otherwise blank left hand side of the photograph. Here, the photographer does just enough to keep us interested, primarily due to the clever lining of the second closest pole on the deck. This pole acts as the anchor for the entire scene, and our eyes move from this point downwards and left of the frame. A strong photograph will know where it wants you to look, giving you very little option on where you should set your gaze. What have we learned in this lesson? We've learned that the rule of thirds is composed of a grid of nine squares and the goal here is always to ensure that your point of interest occurs at these intersecting lines. We've also learned that you can create lines yourself from objects or lines that occur naturally within the frame, especially when shooting architectural or landscape photography. A strong photograph will know where it wants you to look and it will always force your eyes to a certain part of the scene.